Well, Happy New Year, everyone, and we're going to get right into a second relative dating example here. I did a video previously on a much simpler uh, relative dating, and I figured it's good to do multiple of these because um, being able to date rocks when they're presented in this sort of two-dimensional cross-sectional diagram format really is the bread and butter of understanding these types of diagrams. And this one I have right here, just start by taking a good look at it, trying to get an understanding of what exactly everything that's going on in here. Um, because it can be a bit overwhelming when you see all these different layers, you've got a lot of different things going on here. So a good first step to take is just to break it down, uh, make it a lot easier. So if we look here, we can identify a few features. One, we see many sedimentary strata lined up. All of them are lettered and have a variety of symbols denoting uh, or separating them. Then we see that we have two faults here, which seem to be overlapping, labeled X and Y. We have what appears to be an angular unconformity up near the top here. You can tell by this uh, little squiggled, uh, sort of uneven line that will be frequently used to show eroded surfaces, uh, which denote unconformities. And then finally, we've got a little intrusion here that is marked with Z. That should be pretty easy to deal with. Okay, so that, that's most of what's going on here. Once you break it down into little parts, this sort of jumbled mess becomes a lot simpler. And we can start by, uh, as I always say, start from the bottom up. So actually, I should have labeled this before, but we'll say the oldest will be up here. And then we'll go down to the youngest. Okay, so starting with the oldest is pretty easy. We can start basically uh, using the law of superposition and original horizontality. You can say that, well, since A, or layer A down here, you can see it right here, here, and here, broken up by these two faults, but you can ignore that for now and say that, well, since it's at the bottom, let me see, is B, B lies directly on top of it. There's been no folding that has occurred. There has been faulting, but a is still below B in all cases. A is also near Z, but Z cuts through A. So therefore, A must be the oldest. And obviously, you should be able to run through those checks very quickly in your brain. Uh, I'm just saying all the criteria to make it incredibly clear why we can definitively say A must be the oldest. Then we can continue our way up and look at B. B is directly above A, so it's younger. It's directly below C in all cases, even when the fault breaks it up. So it's got to be younger than C. And once again, Z does cut through B. Therefore, B comes next. Okay, let's move on to C. C is above B in all cases with the fault. It is still affected by all of the faults, so it's not younger than uh, X or Y. But then over here, we can see that Z does not cut through C, which means likely this surface right here was eroded, um, which uh, stop the intrusion here, and then C was deposited on top of it. So Z actually must come next in the sequence. So Z comes, and then C, once again, it's younger than D, X, and Y. So C must be next. Okay, moving along nicely. Then we come up to D, and we look at D here, and we can't actually, when we look at this, it appears to be affected by this fault as well as this fault, which is where now we have to take into account what type of faulting has occurred. This fault, and X right here, is what appears to be a, let's see, here's the foot wall, here's the hanging wall. It appears to be a normal fault because the foot wall has been upthrown. See, C here is higher than C here, B here is higher than B here, you know. And then Y appears to be a reverse fault because the hanging wall, this piece, appears to be upthrown or the foot wall has been down thrown, foot wall down thrown reverse, FDR. Okay, and then we look at D compared to D here. Well, that sort of shift, that sort of dramatic shift is, isn't apparent with any of these um, when they've just been affected by one fault. So D is most likely affected by both X and Y. I could have made the picture a bit more clear, but yes, D is 
D is the next one in the sequence. Okay, now we can turn to X and Y. Because E actually isn't affected by X. We can see that E is above where X cuts off at Y. So X is going to be the next piece of the sequence. Okay, but then E is affected by Y, so we can put that as the next one, as is F. So E, then F, I'm going a bit faster now because hopefully you're catching on uh, or you understand how this simple uh, ordering of horizontal strata works. But then we come up to Y, and looks like we get cut off here. This faulted surface had been eroded, and therefore the fault Y must be younger. It doesn't pass through J or K. So therefore, Y must be the next piece of the sequence. Okay, now we get up to this portion here. Now, we have strata that aren't perfectly horizontal. So we can definitively say that some sort of folding or uh, tilting, some sort of pressure has caused these to be at this angle. Now, when we're ordering these, it's, it's not as easy as just ordering um, horizontal layers of strata because one isn't really above the other. Now, logically, you might say that G would be the oldest, right? Because it appears to be below, you know, if you were to look at it like sort of like a foot wall, hanging wall thing, if this were the boundary, this one would kind of go over G and G would be below H, right? Well, we don't know what degree of folding has occurred here or what degree of tilting, excuse me, has occurred. So we actually, although many times you will see this to be assumed that G is younger, we actually have another piece of evidence that tells us otherwise. And that is these little pieces, you can see the blue lines in here, these little uh, sections within I of J. J is the one with the blue lines as well. And by the law of inclusions or included fragments, we know that J therefore must be older than I. So if we continue with that pattern, then it actually gets older as you go this way. So the next oldest in the sequence would be K, followed by J, followed by I, followed by H, followed by G, finishing off the sequence. And that just about does it. Hopefully that was uh, informative enough. Hopefully you understood the process there. Once again, these really are, it really is important to understand the ordering of uh, cross-sectional diagrams like this, and I know it looks ugly, but the real world isn't all nice, flattened uh, pieces of strata where you're going to be dealing with one fault or one unconformity at a time. It, it does get ugly, this. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully it was informative, otherwise good review, and I will see you all in the next video. Ciao. No, as we can see, once again, the, the uh, fault appears, it's a little hard to see on this picture on this, but what I intended was...